Le Amp people out there, um, guitar freaks, that's you, you and me, we're the same. Well, yeah, otherwise he wouldn't be watching. Hey, uh, I had the pleasure of uh, getting a call last night from a buddy who was uh, working for the Le German, uh, l'Allemand, huh? <laughs> Vox distribution, and said, hey, I got the MVX 158 here. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Vox had these, or has these, um, MV50 heads. Five by now, and uh, we looked at the MV50 clean, which is pretty amazing, and pretty damn loud, and it's only this big. Uh, works with pedals, uh, and then sadly, I never looked at the rock and the AC, and now there's a high gain in the boutique. So we're going to look at them. Um, but Vox took this new tube technology, which is these weird kind of super small flat tubes. Uh, they're new kind of tubes, which are also in the new Ibanez new tube screamer, and put them in a big head. Now, the, the fortile, I was going to say, the fortile of them. The advantage of them is that they're really tiny. Now, what the advantage is in a big head, I'm not quite sure about, but we're going to find out. Uh, one advantage that I've been told is uh, longevity. You'll never have to exchange these. These aren't going to wear out like your 12AX7. Uh, 12AX7 aren't that expensive. Uh, power amp tubes are, but we're going to get to that. So, new tube head, but in big, more channels, more controls. The little ones were, you know, tiny. Um, 150 watts. And it's here, and apparently I'm one of the first people to ever touch it. <laughs> so um, let's get into the features and figure it out, go through all the features. I made a little professional cheat sheet right here, all the stuff we have to go through. So in my beautiful handwriting, there's channels, the bias on the back, the foot switches, does it work with pedals, looking at the loop, looking at the wet dry function, the power soak, what does it sound like in the room? Technically, we should compare it to a couple of actual big-ass tube amps like the the Revsonsons and the Engelsons and the Friedmansons uh, working with different guitars and, and we have a lot of stuff to cover. So, let's cover it. So as you, as you can see, or maybe you can't see, this is the size of my hand. This is not a full-size head. Um, it's rather small and that's not what she ever said. Um, and it isn't like a traditional tube head. I don't think it's got the transformers and that stuff. And it's got a Class D power amp, which means it is very light, uh, definitely for the size. So let's look at the front panel. We have channel one and two. Or you can foot switch it. The foot, 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 the, <laughs> the foot switch is not included. Um, and uh, well, we'll talk about the foot switches in a bit. Because it's on the list further down. So channel one can be clean or crunch. I would love it that if that light actually gave you a feedback over that, because if you're on stage, uh, all you see is channel one is active. Uh, how did you set that up earlier? You might have forgotten. So it would have been nice if that actually showed you what it did. So we have clean, only tone and volume, um, bright, engaged when it's at, in the down position, and fat, engaged when it's in the down position. Now if we switch to channel two, it is also beautifully lit in the same freaking color. Hmm? A choice that I can't necessarily share. Um, and then we have rhythm and lead. So pretty much two voicings per channel, which would have warranted four different color lights. Uh, so set up the gain, also bright and fat, and a mid shift, which uh, when we played around with the amp earlier, we found out that when you're boosting the mids, you don't necessarily hear it that much, but when you're cutting it, uh, it is quite severe and gives you different choices for scooping the mids. Then uh, the volume, and then we have a reverb built in. Presence, which is high end for the um, power amp. Resonance, which is low end for the power amp, and two different master volumes. Uh, the second master volume you can't access without the foot switch. So let's talk about the foot switch. Um, when you are on foot switch, which again is not included. It's it's a simple two button foot switch. You could probably use yours. Um, plugs in in the back. You can change channel one and channel two, and switch between the master volumes, which is great for live situation. Go here and have a solo volume. Uh, you cannot 
However, switch clean and crunch or rhythm and lead with foot switch, which would be nice. If you hooked up a second foot switch, uh, which is uh, here, that's where the foot switches would go in. Um, you have a ch uh, ch uh, you have your choice to also switch on and off the reverb and switch on and off the uh, built-in effects loop, which is here. So yeah, that's uh, uh, that's pretty cool, and it's individual foot switches, which I'm in favor of, so that you can actually use looper switches and their switching functions to do that, and it's not a proprietary input. Uh, however, Vox doesn't offer a four-button foot switch, so you have to use two two-button foot switches. Trust me, without rehearsing the shit, this is difficult to say. Um, staying in the back, <laughs> get it? Hmm. We're not going to go any further there. Um, there's an eco mode. I don't know what that's for, for lights or something. Um, this is something special that we not talk about. It's not fully in yet. Um, uh, for 8 and 16 ohm choosing of the speaker out. I love that the speaker outs are clearly labeled in red. Speaker output right here. This is something like a power soak, which with a class D isn't, uh, you can't really ruin the tubes of the power amp section. So that's uh, from full to, I can't even read that, who knows, half, fifth, twentieth, something, down to a thousand. So this is definitely an amp that will play nicely um, at home. Here is then, I think, the emulated out, which I have not prepared to be hooked up, but I will. So now it's hooked up. It is hooked up and uh, you can have the, where am I, this is difficult, uh, output level right here. Um, I'll have to set that up in a bit. So yeah, we're going to check how good the emulated speaker simulator out is. And then there's something special over here, which you can't really see. There's a little uh, trim pod for the bias for each channel from vintage to modern. And it actually changes the sound quite drastically. And you can change up each channel uh, differently with the tube bias. Not toe bias, but tube bias. God, I'm funny. As you can see, we have a ton of stuff to cover. Let's go through the channels. We're gonna start with a uh, single coil guitar, see what happens, go to a guitar with humbuckers and some oomph. So right now, we have this pretty, pretty Megmo. I gotta, gotta find space next to the camera. Um, we have this pretty McMahon, uh going into it. It is going into the Universal Audio Ox right there. No worries, we're going to check different things as well. Uh, which is loaded with a 412 uh, with cream bags, mic with a 57 and a ribbon. So, I have sound. Compared, here's the thing, compared to a tube amp. This has tubes, but it's new tubes, and the power amp section is class D. You will see that my master is quite high up. Um, because 150 Class D watts are not the same in volume as 150 uh, tube watts or all tube head watts. I know as someone explained to me why it absolutely isn't the same. A 20 watt tube head, all tube head, will get quite quite a bit louder than a 20 watt um, solid state or Class D head. So no, they are not the same. So this isn't, it's going to get way, way loud enough to survive at any band, but it is not equivalent to 150 watt all tube head. So here we are on clean. And let's get the volume up. That's what it's supposed to do. So um, let's look at the tone. It looks like a high, high frequency roll off. Uh, what can I get on gain? Ah, now on a 
tube's kicking in a bit. So here, not so much, but if you kick the tube a bit, now we're talking! So let's brighten it up. we want a little bit of reverb there so let's give it some reverb and see what happens Been nice if they had given this just a spring like you would expect from any kind of built-in amp reverb which it isn't it's quite a big haul and um i would have loved to have a little push button on the front three colors on the button the button itself three colors uh and you can change from spring to plate to ambient hall or something like this um having only a really long tail um difficult it's not to dial in a little bit of ambience, just a little bit of depth. It's always just this pretty damn big thing. And even if, if I dial it back quite a bit. So if I compare this to a true spring, I have a little bit of feep here when I engage the ventress. I wonder why that is. It might be the power supply. Let's make that shorter. That channel quite a bit now with the bright and where the gain is again it would have been nice to have a reverb like that back to the built-in one well, let's stay there um, and here Let's see what the fat does. It does serious fatness. I have a feeling this is a great amp for.
So, um, a little bit too much for me there, but that for me is... Of course, if we had some... Again, delay from the renters. I like this a lot. So definitely some cool options here with uh, uh, the clean channel. When you have the gain in the middle, it's like a eh, mm, mm, little bit too sterile. There it wakes up. Now while we're on the clean channel, let's see how it reacts to a KHDK Ghoul Screamer. Um, which is really just a, what's that thing called, uh, a Tube Screamer kind of clone. How do, how do the new tubes react to it? works for me. Now moving on to the crunch. Would be so nice if that changed color. Dial this back a bit, give it brightness. That is pretty damn cool. We kick that with the Ghoul Screamer. It doesn't like that. <laughs> Okay, so using pedals with it uh, to slightly boost, to slightly, yeah, but not to, not to kick its ass.
Nido. Moving to channel two. Rhythm in the middle. Brightness in. for copyright reasons. Um it's a little bit fizzly fuzzly. Let's dial it back. Put in the fat, which probably you don't need. Okay, take that out again. Uh, let's, at that setting, look at the treble. Nicely adjustable middle. I'll get to that later. Bass. Bass. The amp has a lot of bass if you want it. Or not a lot if you don't want it. So, um, presence. And it has a lot of resonance, a lot of bass if you want it. Definitely quite a bit more than other amps on their resonance uh, switchy Rooney thing. Um, let's go to lead, but it's kind of pointless with this guitar. <laughs> go back here and fiddle with the bias in the back Whew. and the stomach uh, uh. now it's all the way on vintage Crunch and do that. And now it's on modern. No, 
now it's on Mintage. <laughs> Okay, I think I get it. I think we can, I think we can easily uh, put a check mark on what the bias does, uh, so we don't have to look at that anymore. Uh, when it's more on vintage, it will give you more of a power amp thickness saturation tubey thing. Now it has new tubes in the preamp and the power amp, but the power amp is not powered by new tubes; it's just flavored by new tubes. So what a power amp does with its uh, compression, with its flabbiness when you have an old amp and you crank it up, um, that's what it does. That's what the new tubes in the power amp section are for. Yet again, loud does the uh, uh, is done by a class D power amp. Now, the more you put it on modern, the more headroom you have. The more you put it on vintage, the flabbier, a little bit fuzzier, the more the power amp sound comes into play. If you want that, fine. If you want more of a fast response where the power amp is just making it loud instead of uh, taking part in the sound sculpting, keep it more on the modern side. I keep it in the middle and we're good. Um, now, moving on to a guitar with humbuckers and looking at a little bit more of the modern sounds. Now here's a Schecter Apocalypse, um, beautiful guitar with a huge guitar tit and locking tuners and just this amazing finish and all that stuff. This is, this is a pretty axe. So I played it earlier at the distributor with uh, the cab that comes with it or th that you can get for it for about 400, which is loaded with a Celestian Red something mega cool speaker, pretty nice cap. It clocks in at three ninety nine. Um, it was impressive. It's a one twelve. How many people want a one twelve? I personally would because it matches it and it sounds good. But it's also not inexpensive at four hundred. It costs almost as much as half the amp. Um, but especially the the uh, crunch sounds were very impressive and kicked my nuts. So let's see what happens here. Well, clean of course. Here. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty! What are you? Channel 2, I know. Channel 2, rhythm bright, we don't need fat. Little bit scooped down here and let it roll. <laughs>
it does that. Um, it does that rather well. Of course, if you turn on the ventures and you want a little bit more. <laughs> I'm not used to this. Uh, so, okay, yeah, this is all possible. So, tighten this channel up with the Tube Screamer, which is, is of course something people want to know. By turning the drive down and the volume up. I don't think it needs a lot of tightening. It doesn't do tons, it does a little bit. It works, but it, it, it's not, you don't need to because the amp already is where it's supposed to be. So we're gonna put it on channel one, clean. And we're gonna turn on the rev pedal because I wanna know what happens there. On blue, everything centered here. The rev G3. Interestingly, it has a very similar sound. Uh, I'm not getting quite the volume out of it, uh, out of a channel 2 of the uh, MVX 150H, uh, as with the rev pedal on the clean channel, but the clean channel with the rev G3 is freaking amazing! Um, cool! We talked about the foot switches, we checked pedals, we checked the loop. Before we go into, let's do the power soak, let's do that. Um, which of course also brings us to in the room. Let's go to rhythm sound here. <laughs> um, let's check the power soak by just turning it down. It can go to all off. Now, of course, what I need to do is put the amp in the room. So right now it's coming. I'm in the room on this Coffee Caps Latte 212 loaded with cream backs. And um, on the lowest setting. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
that's definitely a bedroom setting. Here's the one, here's the one. Uh, it's going I don't think I can actually do this in the room. If I go any louder, I'm dying. So this amp, how much more do we have? Okay. I'm at a fifth. I'm at a fifth of the possible volume. That's ridiculous. This thing will literally kill you. So be careful and use that knob wisely. So obviously what we want to know is how does it fare? Is that something one says? Uh, compared to some, I don't want to say real amps. It is a real amp. And it's pretty damn nice. But how does it fare to some amps we covered? Uh, so let's set up a nice crunch. Channel one. Let's tune the guitar. And I picked some of my favorite sounds in those categories. Sadly, the Ref 100P I can't do for the metal sound, because uh, that's the plug that right now is in the box. And the X150H, I, I did that without looking, come on. So I'm gonna just go, uh, I'm sorry, I have to grab my remote. Here's a remote. Uh, and switch to the Friedman. I think when I switch back to the MV50, M MVX 158. Um, it's not going to directly work because as soon as I disconnect it, somehow it it uh, is, if I switch to the other amp, uh, it goes into some kind of standby mode, which is a bit of an annoyance. <laughs> So that's the Friedman behind me, Friedman small box. And as I said, I switched back and now it's not working. I actually have to turn it on and off. That is a little bit of annoyance. Uh, it's very sad that it doesn't have a um, switches on the front. There's a little switch on the back, the thing where it, uh, right next to the power plug, where it says on and standby, and it it, it kind of is a little bit of a seesaw in both directions. Um, when you go to standby, it just turns off, and you have to hold it in a bit. So it isn't really a standby. It's an off. So again, we do this. Uh, For some reason, uh, the aux is reacting very differently to the actual real tube amp versus the new tube amp with class D power section. You can clearly hear that all of a sudden gets much louder um, and more dynamic. So both of them are set up to 8 ohm. I don't quite know what that is, but it, that's what it is. So we're going to do this in clean. Switching back, I have to turn it off. And um, we go to clean, and then switch to the Rev Dynamis right there, which is a brilliant clean channel.
Ref Dynamis has more roundness. So what else uh, did I turn on? Let's look at um, oh the Dietzel, Dietzel Paul. So we're gonna go to something more hygienish, probably around here. <laughs> so fuzzy now. I'm gonna switch that to more modern on the bias. And we're gonna go to the diesel. Interestingly, I think that the type of distortion and saturation is, is dead on. The digital pops out a bit more, whereas the MVX 150H uh, stays a little bit in the back. It's not in your face as much, which is something we used for modeling amps. It's not as bad as a modeling amp when it comes to being in the speaker, just not popping out. It's not as in front as a, an all tube amp or in old tube amp, let's call it that, because it is into a tube amp. Um, so, uh, yeah, but in terms of the quality of the character of the sound was dead on, if you ask me. Um, I was surprised there. So if we're going to go to this, uh, I'm going to have to go back. Now, of course, it's gone again. And we're now on a high gain sound. <laughs> Let's put the mid-shift down. And so on. We're going to go to the... Uh, Engel Metal Master, which is in a similar price range. Uh, no, we're not, apparently. Here we go. It has more mids, but of course I can easily do that by going back on the mid shift. So um, if I do this one more time, uh, mid shift up. <laughs> Okay, so enough of that. Um, let's talk about more stuff on the list. Wet dry. Now, this is something that is technically amazing. Vox said, "Day doing a wet dry setup is very difficult. People need an amp and another amp, and then put all their um, effects." which would be delay, or they're probably time-based effects, delay reverb into that dry amp setup, and then they have a way to mix those two together. But the dry cap always has the punch and the clarity of just the dry guitar sound, and the wet cap carries all the effect signal. Now, for that, you need, again, splitters, different amps, different caps, all that. Now, with the MEX 150H, I'm going to learn that at the end of this review, you have... The option of doing that with one amp 
it has a separate power amp, which takes only its built-in reverb and what is in the effects loop and sends it to a second cap. So um, in the back, Leslie, if you go in the back, <laughs> get it. Um, there's this extra wet out right there. And we're going to plug that in now. Now, my uh, cap that you're hearing right now. Doesn't matter how much I crank up the reverb. It's not going to be there. Reverb's all the way up now, but it's coming out of the second cap. Now, it's very important, or semi-important, or it's somehow important, that the wet will only carry the actual wet signal. Otherwise, you have the guitar in there twice, and depending on how it's mic'd, depending on what you're doing, you have face issues because you're actually having the guitar twice. Now, what I'm doing here is the dry is going through the aux, the wet is going through the Torpedo Studio. So, um, I'm going to turn that on. And now the reverb is going through the Torpedo Studio. hear that right here I'm having some phase issues because my guitar all of a sudden got a lot more hollow so there is um, more dry signal in there than I want now if I crank this all the way down the built-in reverb it's not it's it's off of course now two speakers or in this case actually they're probably three because in the torpedo I've got two um, and there's some kind of phase issue going on. So I need only a wet signal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a very drastic sound on my Ventress. Now, on the Ventress, of course, I have a... Um, mix knob so right now i have the mix down which means on that second speaker i have quite a bit of dry signal and some wet and that is definitely too much phasing so what i really want is only wet right there But here's a problem. On my Ventress, or any delay that I have, I have a mix knob. Now, if I give that mix knob all the way wet, I don't necessarily have a volume knob. So what is going to that second speaker uh, will be determined by nothing. It'll be just as loud as your original signal. So that means your dry signal and your wet signal will be equally loud. And um, I see that as a problem. So because all of a sudden you don't have a mix between dry and wet. What you want to go to your dry speaker is completely dry. What you want to go to your wet speaker is completely wet. So that on the wet, on the Ventress or any other effect, I will go all the way wet. Only effect. Otherwise, I have phase issues. Or I might have phase issues. I don't want those. So what determines the volume of my wet signal? I can't do that on my pedals. So the amp would have to take care of that. So what I would need on the front panel would simply be a volume for the wet speaker. I don't have that. Unless that's master 2, which I don't think it is. No, it is not. So I'm pretty much left with 
if I use this on a stage in a live situation, a wet signal that is as loud as my dry signal and I have no control over it. So at least on the back of the amp, it would have to be a volume. It would have to have a volume for the wet out or preferably on the front, a mixing in the wet speaker. That would be amazing. We're going to get to something else that they could have done in the My Two Cents section, which would have made this amp mind-blowingly amazing. It is pretty damn good, but a couple of tweaks and you would have had a massive product. So um, I applaud Vox for trying to make an amp that has a wet out and a dry out going to two different speakers. That's pretty damn amazing. Uh, I think one thought about the mix level or the relationship between the two speakers just wasn't made because you need a separate volume for that second speaker. Um, so, brings us to the DI out. Okay, I'm now wired for DI. So, let's check that and then we're kind of done. Let's clean DI. There's a volume on the back. You can't pick that's that uh, can't pick any speakers. It's not an impulse response loader or whatever. It's just a frequency corrected signal, which could come in handy in a live situation if you don't want a mic. If it's good. Ah, that was horrible. Let's put in some of the build and reverb. Of course, clean is easy. Uh, let's do a crunch. That's not good. Something is wrong with that tube somehow. Did you hear that? It sounds fuzzy. If you really, really have to, you can use it for the high gain setting, that's okay. The in between the crunch, uh, don't don't use the DI. I mean, but that's something that goes for pretty much any amp that has a built-in DI out, other than the Houston Ketness, where the built-in DI out is the red box and it's good. Um, any other amp with a built-in DI sounds pretty much just like that. Uh, yeah, so it's not a negative, it's just not any better than anyone else. Let's talk about positives. The Vox MBX150H. It is light. It clocks in at 850 euro. Comes in a combo, by the way, for 999. 
uh, which could be kind of cool for like the jazzy guy going out clean, a little bit of reverb, you know. Um, and the combo has the speaker that by itself is 400 bucks. So that might be steel for 150 more. It is light. It is free of maintenance. Uh, you don't have to change the tubes. Absolute benefit. I think it is rather flexible from sparkly cleans to uh, a crunchy, kind of really cool single coily plexi ish sounds. Um, I think it nailed quite a few sounds of the amps in the wall. Um, it sounded very similar to the small box, it sounded very similar to the uh, diesel. However, they were more uh, in your face, and this was more like a little bit in the back. You can dial in quite a few things on the front. Clean crunch, rhythm lead, technically four channels. Too bad it's not switchable. Um, the bright and the fat are a nice addition and very flexible. A presence and resonance, that's what it's called, yes, uh, give you a lot of power and flexibility. Built-in power soak down to nothing. The amp can get extremely loud, no chance that you're going to have a problem with that in any band. It'll cover everything. Uh, built-in effects, which can be serial or parallel, we didn't uh, say that, by the way. Um, the bias option on the back allows you to dial in your kind of how much does the power amp play a role in the sound sculpting to your liking, which is cool. I love the fact that the handle, which we can see on the amp back, Leslie, is flat on top, so you can just put on any amp or little effects board or whatever without the handle being an issue. You can easily really grab in there. Um, that is nicely done. I, I like the design of this quite a bit. Sounds are good. I think sounds are better than a lot of modeling amps. They're more dynamic. They're more in your face. When you're sitting in front of the cab, modeling amps kind of like are hiding behind the cab. Um, all full old style tube amps are uh, filling the room and kicking your nuts. This is somewhere in between. It doesn't quite jump out of the amp like an all tube amp or an old tube amp. This is new tube, old tube. Uh, however, it also doesn't kick you in the nuts and fill the room and, and is full. And it, uh, like an old, new tube, an old tube amp, and you can also hear that going through the speaker simulator. It, you can clearly hear difference of the sound when I change from, from this to the small box. So it doesn't, it's somewhere between the, the really I'm not even here in the room with you kind of a modeling amp and the I'm, I'm, I want to kill you right now of a, of a tube amp. It's somewhere in between. Uh, the benefits are clearly a little, bit of flexi a little bit more flexibility. And, well, I don't want to necessarily say that, but, um, uh, you know, weight, all that stuff. I love that Vox went for that wet, dry thing, and they thought about what can we put in this. It's class D, an extra class D power amp doesn't cost us shit, so let's put it in there. Uh, they didn't go all the way, because... Where's my mix? Where's my level for that uh, dry, uh, for that wet amp? Without that, it is a limited function. Now, here's something else they didn't do, which, again, doesn't make this amp bad, but would have made it so much cooler. If you already have the second output and you have a second power amp in there, which you have to have for it to work, they could have given their effects return another input, which means effects return in stereo, and then a little switch next to the uh, wet out saying wet dry setup or stereo setup. And then you could have wired in effects stereo, and you could have had a full stereo setup for Leslie speakers, for delays, ping pong delays, um, uh, 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 stereo tremolos, I mean for a lot of stuff, it's already there. The second power amp is already in there, the output's already in there. It would have required a little switch for routing to go wet dry or stereo, and another jack on the effects return. That's it. Couldn't have cost more than a couple of bucks and would have given you a stereo new tube head from Vox, which would have been mind-blowing for anyone having a pedal board with ambient effects and stuff like this. Uh, great opportunity, slightly missed. It doesn't make this a bad amp, 
it just would have made it such a cool app. Um, so the other thing that is a missed opportunity, again, it doesn't make this bad in any way, but something that I would want to see in a Mark II. Again, I'm switching channels and I'm seeing blue and blue. And I'm seeing blue. And no matter what I'm do doing, I'm seeing blue. Um, now, if I'm on a rev, uh, let, let's show this. Let's go to the amp wall. Channel one, blue. Channel two, red. Channel 1, crunch. The rev shows me immediately on any stage what channel I'm on. I just look over and bam, there it is. Now, first of all, the lights on the channels should very clearly be different colors because I need some kind of visual feedback. If I'm dancing around on stage, I'm looking over, I see a blue light. Did I just see channel 1 or channel 2? Do I know if I'm on clean, crunch, lead or rhythm? I have no visual feedback. And on the front panel here, this really cool almost looks like flames coming up. Um, blue lighting could have changed along with the colors. Imagine you were on your lead channel and this is red and you're on stage and you're looking over and it immediately gives you visual feedback. I'm on the metal channel. And then it's blue. I'm on the clean channel. It's green. I'm on the crunch channel. Whatever colors they would have picked, it could have given me visual feedback over where the amp is. And I think visual feedback on stage is very important. Right now, you got nothing. Not even the channel uh, lights will tell you what subsetting you're on. Again, not something that would have cost a lot of money. We all know that an LED strip, right now they got a blue one. If they had done RGB, yeah, it drives the price up by about two bucks in China. Could have been done. Again, those are not major critiques. This is simply something that I would have liked to see to be a little bit more gaga about it. I do think that the sounds are good. It gets damn loud. And compared to what you get in the 850 euro price range, it offers quite a bit. It's small. It's a good companion to easily carry around with you. And um, the sounds are fun. When I played it with the uh, cap that you can get with it, that was quite a bit of chunk and, and punchiness, uh, especially the high gain channel, really, really cool. Now, can the new tube technology keep up with something like a Friedman for, again, th more than three times the price and less features? No, I don't think it yet, it can yet. Uh, that's not necessarily the fault of the new tube technology, that might be the Class D power amp. Okay, because we're still talking about the power amp that makes it loud, this Class D. Um, I'd rather play this than a modeling amp, absolutely. And I think it is a contender for, it, it, it's, a, it's competition for amps in its price range. Like, for example, that uh, Engel Metal Master or uh, maybe the Houston Ketners, uh, they're also fully loaded with features and light. You might want to check out both and see which you like more. Uh, I, I really couldn't tell you which I would pick. Both of them blue. Um, but you should definitely check it out when you're in the store. If you got this much money to spend and you want something with all these features, especially, you know, turning it down and stuff. Uh, not a bad choice. So, uh, way to go, Vox. Look at Mark II in stereo with the more colors and a... Mix knob for the wet dry. That's really important because you have an amazing feature on there. And then, ah, damn it. Ah, uh. So, that's it. Links below. I'm so happy that uh, they gave this to me for a day to check it out as one of the first people ever. Um, thank you, guys. You know I love you. Um, links below. Animals at the end. This is probably an hour and a half now, but what can I do? Hey, they pack it full of features. You want to know about them? I show you. Peace out.